Welcome back to the channel. This is Trendy Storm, and you are watching fifth and final part of What If Naruto Was Experimented by Orochimaru. If you enjoy this video, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Now, wasting no time, let's start the story. Now that it was two days before the Konoha Matsuri, Naruto still hadn't woken up. While he had been unconscious for two weeks, his friends began to worry about him. But Tsunade told them that what he had been thinking about had probably worn him down more than usual. Hinata had barely moved from his side. Since she wouldn't leave him, Tsunade made her his personal nurse. She would have been there 24 hours a day, 7 days a week if Tsunade hadn't told her to go home and spend some time with her family. Hinata was making the room clean and making sure Naruto was okay when she heard someone cough. Gara was at the door when she looked up. Kei's cage. Sama. Hinata bowed to him as he walked into the room. Hinata, do I need to tell you this again? Since you're Naruto's friend, just call me Gara. Gara said with some anger. Gomen. Little Hinata said. Gara shook his head at what she did and said, You know. I'll never understand how you like him, but I'm glad he has someone who cares about him. He then stopped making Hinata look at him. He can be trying at times, Hinata said with a smile and a laugh. I'm not. A sleepy voice spoke up. When they turned around, Naruto was staring at Hanada with his eyes half open. How can you say that Hanada? Chan. Naruto asked while yawning. Naruto. Kun. Oh, I have to go get Hokage. Sama. Hanada yelled. She quickly and happily left the room to find Tsunade. Naruto looked at Gara after she was gone. So what brings you here? Naruto asked as he slowly sat up. Gara helped him stand up and sat down in a chair nearby, saying, You. Me? What did Naruto ask? Gara said, You haven't been seen in almost two weeks. I felt a strong chakra come from Konoha when we first left. It felt like your, but it wasn't your. I left Baki in charge and came with my siblings to see if you were in trouble. I felt the chakra change back to yours when we were almost there, but it was much stronger. Oh, I guess by now Oba. Chan has told you what happened with the hubby and all. Gara agreed with Naruto and said, good. Yeah, the only thing we don't know is what happened in that head of yours Otouto. Finally decided to wake up for us, eh? Tsunade asked as she walked in with Hinata close behind her. He rubbed the back of his head and said, well, try getting kicked in the behind by something that can do all of your jutsu and then merge with Kayubi and not get tired. So that's what he did. Hearing this, Tsunade said. Yeah, he said it was the only way to finish Sayukanai off. Then Naruto asked, Ne Kayubi? Naruto smiled and asked the fox, but it didn't answer. Eh? Kayubi? He asked again because he thought the fox was still asleep. Naruto. Kun what's wrong? Hanada asked when she saw the one who was making her confused. I don't know, I think the merger wore him down a lot. But, it stopped Naruto. What Otouto? Tsunade asked, noticing the look on his face. Naruto looked at her with worry and said, I think he's gone. Hanada and Gara looked shocked when they heard this, but Tsunade didn't say anything. What make you think that Naruto? Gara inquired. I don't know a feeling in something else, Naruto said as he looked out a nearby window. What else? Asked Tsunade. I. I saw his memories. Naruto said as he looked at the sheets on the bed. Nani? But I thought you already knew about them? Tsunade asked in surprise. He shook his head and said, I knew what he was going to show me. I believe some of it was too private for him. So? Asked Tsunade she sighed and asked, What did you see? As Naruto looked at her blankly. Oh. Oh, a lot of things. It's too much to explain, but I'll do my best. What Naruto said to her. She replied with a nod. First a saw is being created. Naruto began. Us? Questions from Gara. Yeah, it was almost like I was Kayubi when I witnessed all of this. Naruto told them, well, after he was made, I could feel all the spirits that went into him to give him his power. I saw many years go by and different events happen. He then went on an adventure, which is how he met his partner, a seafoam green vixen. Hanada and Tsunade both looked shocked, and Tsunade looked over at her with shock in her eyes. And? Tsunade told him to go on. 
I saw her with the kit and saw her come back and see the ninjas running away. It made him very angry when he found his family dead and killed them. We were going to Konoha. Noguchi stopped there. Naruto. Kun? Hanada was scared and asked. No one could figure out what was wrong while Naruto looked down at the sheets. He finally looked up at them with tears in his eyes. I saw this and got scared, so Tsunade went over to him. She asked, Oto Udo, what's wrong? I saw him Oba. Chan I saw a Tucson. Naruto said while crying. The three were shocked, and Tsunade let out a gasp, as Kayubi attacked, I saw a Tucson on Gamabunta holding me. I couldn't hear what he said. I wish I understood what he said. Naruto you said he was with Gamabunda? Naruto said yes, and Tsunade smiled at him and asked, then I know what he said. He turned his head to the side and asked, huh? How, Oba? Chan? Tsunade laughed and said, of course you'll call Gamabunta and ask him. He would have heard what he told you if he was with your Atusan. He looked shocked when he heard this. Why didn't I think of that? He asked himself. Continue Oto Udo. Tsunade spoke up. Naruto raised an eyebrow and said, Atusan used the seal, and I felt like I was being pulled into a small space. I knew what was going on, and when we got inside the seal, Atusan held me and I became myself. Before he died, he told me something else. Naruto. Kun? When Hinata asked. Naruto what did he say? Ask Tsunade. Naruto signed to calm down before telling them, he told Naruto, Naruto, my Masuko, please be a good boy and watch over our village for me. I know they may not treat you well, but please forgive them. Tonight they lost a lot. Okasan and I wish we could stay with you, but it looks like our time on this plane is up. Masuko, make us proud. After that, I lost my sight again. Tsunade told her, you know you did what he asked. I know it's just. Naruto said with a nod. He hugged him and said, I know Oto Udo, but it can't be that way. Naruto nodded, and they stood there for a while. Finally, Tsunade let him go. He smiled at her and then turned to look at Gara. So are you staying long Gara? He asked Naruto. We're going to stay for a while. I did leave Baki in charge, and he's already done my job. Gara replied. Was that a good move? He asked Naruto. In response, Gara said, he's one of the few people I would trust with such things. That's when Naruto got sad again. Naruto. Kun? I wish he hadn't left me. You understand. He said Naruto. Kayubi? Gara inquired. Why? Tsunade asked Naruto as he nodded. He was like an extra friend I always had with me. Without him, it will be lonely. He said Naruto. How are you going to lonely without him? A soft-voiced woman asked. He looked over at Hanada and was confused when he heard a voice coming from her direction. He got out of bed to see if he could see anyone else, but there was no one there. Um, Hanada. Chan did you learn how to throw your voice? What did Naruto ask? Are you sure you like him? Hanada laughed at what he said. He's kind of a baka, I said. The voice spoke once more. Hey I am not. Naruto yelled back at the person who was talking. Then a head pocket came out of Hanada's jacket. Naruto was shocked that it was a fix kit and that the fur was a different color. The fox's fur was seafoam green. I say you're a baka. The fox kit talked. Naruto's eyes got really big when he realized the fox had just asked him, are you still dreaming? E, Oto Uto you're not, Tsunade said through laughter. We all thought the same thing when we found them. Them? What did Naruto ask? Hey will someone get me out of here now before I suffocate to death? A rough voice that Naruto knew said. It's not possible. Naruto believed. Alright, hold on, I'll get you out. I just didn't want him to see you before now. As Tsunade walked back to Naruto's bed, he said. After she moved to the other side, Naruto saw the extra lump in the bed sheets. As she threw the sheet over herself, she saw another fox kit with a golden red fur. It's about damn time. I think you meant to kill me, woman. When the fox kit looked up at Tsunade, it said. Don't push me. Tsunade replied to him. 
Q stop messing with Hokage. Sama. The girl's kit said. It looked back at the other one and said, she tried to kill me, Umi. Q? What did Naruto say? The fox kitten then smiled and said, yep kit, didn't think you could get rid of me that easy, did you? He was shocked that both foxes were talking and that one was calling him, kit. Kit. Kit? You can't talk about furballs. It looks like you're the kit Baka. He told the fox again. It's called reincarnation in Baka. I was born again because of what I did. The kit, which we now know to be Kayubi, said. Don't give up. It's you. He stopped, picked him up, and gave him a hug, though. Oi. Oi. Kit, let me go. Kayubi yelled as Naruto hugged her. I though I had lost you. Kayubi stopped moving when he heard Naruto say, as I said before, you can't get rid of me that easily. Naruto started to cry again. He made him sit down on his lap and smiled. The smile turned into a glare, what the hell did you do to me? With a smile, Kayubi told him, I pretty much gave you all of my chakra and everything else. But the how? What did Naruto ask? How can I be here? Naruto agreed and said, let's just say Inari has a funny way of saying thank you. Kayubi then asked further. Then who's she? What is that? Naruto asked, pointing to the seafoam green fox and Hanada. You're the one that saw my memories you tell me? Kayubi asked with a smile. She's your mate? Naruto asked the beautiful woman. Kayubi said, but how? I already told you that Inari is funny. Even more so when he sent us back like this. Kayubi, who sounded angry, said. Hey Q, come on. I believe that getting young again will be good for us. What Umi said. Umi I really am an Ichibi Chibi Kitsune. Yes, you are too. Being Chibi, how am I supposed to scare someone or something? Kayubi asked, pissed off at their situation. You know we can get them back Kayubi so stop complaining. What Umi said. Kayubi was unhappy that he was small and didn't have his nine tails. So how did you get here? What did Naruto ask? For that you'd have to ask the vixen. Kayubi said as he looked over at Hanada. Stop calling Hanada. Chan that for good. It was already bad enough that you called me in my head. He said this while violently waving his hands around. However, Hanada was red. Faced with shame that that was what the two would argue about. Q, stop being mean. What Umi said. Kayubi looked at her scared and let out a hi. Hinata go one and tell him. What Umi said. Well, Naruto. Kun, it was about a week after you passed out on us, Hinata said with a nod. Going back. When Tsunade walked into Naruto's hospital room, she saw Hinata sleeping with her upper body on the bed. She sighed when she saw it. Looks like she spent the night here again. It made Tsunade worry about the girl. She had been by his side ever since Naruto passed out on them. He could only be cared for by herself, Shizune, Hanada, and Sakura because she wouldn't leave him. Hanada was going to be in charge of Tsunade. When she heard the news for the first time, she turned red as hell, but she soon calmed down and thanked her very much. I told her to watch out for Otouto. I didn't mean to live in his room. Tsunade spoke up now. She walked up to the girl and said, Hanada. She looked up at her and said, Ohayu, Hokage. Sama. She yawned and said. Hello, Hanada. I don't think it's part of your job to sleep in a patient's room. Tsunade spoke up. She stretched and said, I know, but I can't leave him alone. Hi, you can, and you're going to today, Tsunade said with a shake of her head. It's been three days since you went home, and Hiyashi sent Neji to my office yesterday to ask where you were. She was shocked and said, Gomen for the trouble, Hokage. Sama. We both know why you're doing this, but you can't stay here all day or until he wakes up, Tsunade said, shaking her head. I'll have Sakura come take care of him today since she's free. Go home, rest, and maybe go for a walk. Tsunade spoke up. Demo, Hanada began to watch out for. No buts, Hanada Hokage orders. Tsunade spoke up. This made Hanada look angry, so she got up, bowed to Tsunade, and left. Tsunade looked at Naruto after she left. If only you told her what you think of her before you passed out, Baka. 
Tsunade told the boy who was out of it. When Hanada got home, she let out a sigh and realized how tired she really was. She heard someone running down the hall as she slowly made her way to her room. She looked at the noise and saw that her little sister was making it. But when she saw Hanada, she stopped running in front of her. Oh so you back? It said Hanabi. Hi. Where are you off to in such a hurry? Hanada asked her with a smile. None of your business. He shot back at her. So what did you do that wound you up in the hospital? Are you Hanabi? I wasn't in the hospital. What did she say? Hanada asked. I could hear Neji and Atusan talking. They told me you were in the hospital. An angry Hanabi said she would deny what she said. I was in the hospital because Naruto. Kun is in there Hanabi. What Hanada said. Oh? I think he's there for a reason you couldn't protect yourself from. What Hanabi said back. Hanabi. The voice shook the whole hall. His eyes got really big when he heard the voice. She turned around and saw Hiyashi coming up behind them. Atusan. Hanabi said while bowing. Correct me if I'm wrong, but aren't you supposed to be a Jukin practice right now? It said Hiyashi. Hi, Atusan, but I forgot something and had to go back to my room to get it. Hanabi talked about. She said, well, you have it now, and Hiyashi looked at her to see what she meant. Get going, because your Jukin master doesn't have time to listen to you talk to your sister. Hanabi bowed to her dad and gave her sister a mean look as she walked to her destination. I think I've let the elders influence her too much. He said, shaking his head. She shook her head and looked up at him. E, she just says what she thinks, and sometimes she's right, she said. When she said those words, Hiyashi got angry and asked, if that was about Naruto. You knew you couldn't have stopped this, right? Hi, I know that, but she's right sometime I can't protect myself. Hinata said as she looked at the ground. Hinata look at me. Hiyashi looked up at him and said, you might not be good at protecting yourself, but only the air can call the Yuki Tora. Also, we both know that you make up for your lack of fighting skills with your great medical skills and kindness. The same as your Okasan. She was shocked when her dad told her she was a lot like her mom, Arigato Atusan. He shook his head and said, I should have told you that a long time ago. Now clean up and take a short break. In the evening, you might want to clean up Naruto's house a bit. Since neither of you has been there in more than a week. Hiyashi went to the dojo to watch his younger daughter's lesson while Hinata went into her room. About three hours had passed by the time Hinata finally came out of her room, looking rested and ready to go. Now to head over to Naruto. Kuns. Hinata said with a smile. As soon as she got to the forest, he jumped into the trees and ran in the direction she knew by heart. She could hear people talking as she got closer to the house though. I do not believe this. His sense of humor is all over the place. A man's voice spoke. Come one cue, be thankful he let you come back at all. The voice of a woman purred. Stop it. This isn't coming back. I'm a kid. A man's voice said, angry. Q he could have just left you there, but he did this to help that child and because of what had happened to us. Thank you very much, Onagai. The woman said. To her surprise, when she got to where the voice was coming from, there was nothing there but two foxes. One of them had seafoam green fur, and the other one had fur that looked like Naruto's hair in a reddish shade. Umi, how could he treat me like this? A lot of people were afraid of me, but now look. No one could hurt me. You've turned me into a bloody kit. An angry man's voice said. The male fox was moving back and forth quickly. Thought it was strange that the male fox in the clearing would have said that. The female kit moved next to him and put her head under his to stop him from moving. Kayubi, help me calm down. All I care about is that we're together. The girl co-ed. Kayubi? Hanada whispered that she was shocked, but the two foxes heard her. Kayubi began to growl at the person who had come up behind them without giving them a chance. The woman, Umi, didn't feel threatened by the stranger and moved toward them anyway. She saw that it was a human girl with white eyes when she got close. Kanichi wa human. Umi talked. Kanichi wa Umi. Sama. That's what Hanada said back. After she spoke, Kayubi heard her voice and asked, Hanada? Are you really Kayubi? 
Hinata asked across the clearing, shocked by what she had seen. Umi laughed and said, Hey, that's Hinata. Chan. How do you know each other, if I'm not being rude? This one is the kit's mate, Umi. Kayubi said with a smile. But Hinata turned red as blood when she heard this. She tried to calm down by shaking her head. Kayubi how? She asked Hinata. Oh well. Inari and Kami are obviously funny, because they chose to give Umi and me another chance at life. I'm stuck in a kit's body right now, though. With almost no power, and look at me. Kayubi said upset. You look cute. What Umi said. Yes, I'm the feared Kayubi, not a cute kitten. What could they do? Kayubi yelled. I'm glad Kayubi is still here. It would be lonely for Naruto. Kun without you. Hinata said with a smile. Nah, he'll probably be glad to get rid of me. Kayubi spoke up. Hinata where are you going? What did Umi ask? This is Naruto. Kuns. He's still not awake from what happened, and it's been a week since I was there. For when he wakes up, I was going to clean up a bit. Hinata spoke up. Oh. Let's go help her, Q. Umi said with a smile to Kayubi. Hi, hi. He said Kayubi. After that, the three of them went back to Naruto's house. Backwards look. They stayed with me after that, but Kayubi wouldn't leave your side, so Hokage. Sama let him stay here. When Naruto looked up, Kayubi looked down at him. Nani? The Kayubi asked. I thought you did care. He said Naruto. I thought you were smarter than that, Kit. Another thing is that you need to learn how to handle all the power you now have. He said Kayubi. The question, power? When Tsunade asked. She looked at him and asked, Woman, where do you think all my power went? Nani. The villagers could hear Tsunade's voice. Naruto laughed at her response and said, Nice Kayubi. So Otouto what happened? Tsunade asked now. Naruto sighed because he knew he had to tell them all at some point. Well I won. Naruto said with a smile. We can tell that since Konoha is still here, Tsunade said with a smile as she shook her head. But I want to know what happened. Kayubi wouldn't tell us. Naku looked at him and said, you could have told them too. Kayubi shook his head and said, I didn't want to. Naruto's head hurt like a vein when Kayubi said, well. Naruto began to move. After that, he told them what had happened before and after Kayubi merged with him. But he didn't say what changed him back to normal. Kit, are you not going to tell her yet? Kayubi thought as she smiled at him. He glared at him again and said, I know what you're thinking. Drop it for now. All of the other people in the group didn't understand what Kayubi meant when he shrugged, but Tsunade did. Okay, I'll get everyone together and let them know you're awake and what happened. Just happy that you're safe, Oto Uto. To be safe, I want you to stay here one more day. You can then go home. As Tsunade left the room, she said. A w w w w e, but I hate hospitals. Naruto was upset. I must go to tell my siblings what has happened. Gara said as he left the room, giving Hanada a nod as he went. Then it was just Naruto and Hanada. Well, Naruto. Kun, I need to go help a Tucson get ready, Hanada said. Preparations? What did Naruto ask? Hanada smiled, hi, the Konoha Matsuri is in a couple of days and we have to get ready. After saying this, Hanada and Umi turned around and began to walk away. Anyo, Hanada. Chan, he told the girl to stop. When she turned around, she saw that his head was down. Naruto. Kun? She asked. Um, do you want to go to the Matsuri with me? When there was silence, Naruto had a second thought and said, you know what, forget I asked. I'll see you later, okay? She smiled at him because she was shocked by what he said. When he realized she hadn't left, he finally looked up at her. I'm be happy to go with you Naruto. Kun. That was it. Hanada ran out of the room, and Umi was holding on for dear life because she was moving so fast. Real smooth kit. Kayubi told him with a smile. Yurasai Chibi. Naruto yelled back with a smile. Kayubi growled and bit him on the hand, saying, Itai, Baka Chibi Kitsune. I'm Kayubi. K-Y-U-U. -U. 
if not by, then Chibi or Kitsune. Kayubi yelled in anger. Well we can't call you that in public you know that right? He said Naruto. Hanada and the other people who know about Umi and me have been calling me Q, and no one has said anything about it. Umi really likes Hanada. He said Kayubi. Well you know Hanada. Chan. Naruto said with a smile. Yeah and it also helped that Umi is a Mizu Kitsune too. He said Naruto. Nani? Naruto asked, shocked by the news. Hey, she can control Mizu. Like I can manage high and K's. He said Kayubi. Well that explains the whole K's being my element. He said Naruto. Actually that would be from you a Tucson. He said Kayubi. Huh? He said Naruto. Yeah, what do you think you use to do Shushin no justice? The Kayubi asked. I never though about that. He said Naruto. And I'm surprised at this. He said Kayubi. Oi. Naruto said and yawn. Go back to sleep kit you're still not up to full strength. I'm not going anywhere. Kayubi said. With that Naruto lay back down and fell asleep. Kayubi moved over beside his head and curled up into a ball and fell asleep beside of him. After Tsunade had left she had gone back to her office and written down everything the boy had told her. Kotetsu, Azumo. Tsunade shouted. The two appeared out of a cloud of smoke, Hokage. Sama. Go and get these people on the list. Tsunade said. Hi. The two said. And if you have trouble getting the Tsukabe tell him is in regards to his apprentice. Tsunade said knowing something about the boy would drive even Jiraiya right now from his so-called research. The two bowed and disappeared the same as they had came. Now to tell them what happened. Tsunade said sighing. Soon, everyone but Jiraiya that Tsunade had asked for was there. Tsunade was getting mad that the man was late. Azumo and Kotetsu were carrying him when he came through the door. She was about to get up and go look for him herself. Behind him were the sand sibling and Tamari, who was very angry and was staring at the hurt man. He was looked over by Tsunade as he walked up to him. Hum, seem like you ran into some nasty K's jutsus there Sukabe. Tsunade said with a grin. How was I to know she had a Tessin with her at all time? I smiled and said, though I would love to know where she was keeping it. When Tsunade's fist hit Jiraiya in the face, Kotetsu and Azuma let go of their support and ran away. Tsukabe. You're lucky that the K's cage here didn't kill you, Tsunade said with a puffy face. But Jiraiya was passed out at that point. As she looked at her situation, Tsunade sighed. Sakura will you wake him up? Tsunade asked as she walked back to her desk. Sakura nodded and walked over to the man, taking out a glass jar and moving it a few times right in front of his face. As soon as he started to sniff it, he became fully coherent. How are you, Hokage? What's this all about? I like looking at a nice group of clouds. It said Shikamaru. Well, I thought you'd all like to know what happened to our loud. Mouthed blonde who was unconscious before. Tsunade said with a smile. All of Naruto's friends yelled, Nani. You mean he's awake? I asked Neji. Neji, why do you think Hanada came home? Tsunade asked with a nod. Because you ordered her to again. Hayashi said that Tsunade had asked many people to come. E, though any longer and I think I was going to have to reconsider having her take care of him, Tsunade said with a laugh. When Hanada heard this, she turned red with shame. Kiba, who was standing next to her, could smell that she smelled different. He took a sniff, and she did, as expected. Hey Hanada, why do you smell like Kitsune? Kiba questioned. After that, Umi let Hanada know she was there by poking her head out of her jacket. She didn't say anything, though. She had already talked to the Hokage, who told her to be quiet unless told to do otherwise. Ah, how cute. Where did you find her, Hanada? Ino asked as she moved toward the fox kit that was now sticking out of Hanada's jacket. Over by Naruto's house with her mate. Hanada spoke as Ino stroked Umi. Her partner? She's still pretty young to have a partner. Kiba said he was shocked. Anyo saw. Hanada said she was trying to explain. We'll get to them soon Kiba, for now I need to tell you about Naruto. Hanada was being helped by Tsunade at the same time. She let out a happy sigh when she saw Tsunade wink at her. Kiba then turned her attention back to her. First, I think for those of you who didn't know. It turns out that the mixed. 
Up jutsu that Naruto used made another being appear in his mind. Naruto only told Jiraiya, Hiyashi, Kakashi, Hanada, and me this because he was afraid of what you would do. Tsunade began. But that's ridiculous they are his friend. Tamari spoke up. Hi, we know that Tamari, but he's been ridiculed most of his life just like you Otouto was too, so he's rarely tell us about things like that. Kakashi spoke up. Tamari nodded to show that she got it. Anyways this other being told Naruto his name was Sayukanai, he was what was supposed to become of Naruto if the Jutsu Orochimaru had used on him had been correct. Tsunade spoke up. But it wasn't correct, you told us this before. Sasuke spoke up. Tsunade agreed, hi, but even with the Jutsu being incomplete Sayukanai was still in Naruto's mind and with each passing day he started growing stronger. He asked, but how? Because Gaki didn't tell us. Jiraiya went on. Tell us what? I asked Neji. About how he was really feeling and those emotions were giving Sayukanai strength. Jiraiya went on to explain. So what does that have to do with what happened two weeks ago? Kiba questioned. Kiba. Kun. What happened then was Sayukanai finally taking control and trying to hurt all of Konoha. He said softly. Kibi asked, why? Think of Sayukanai as all the parts of Naruto that he has always kept inside himself. He hates what people have done to him his whole life and is very angry and lonely. These events would have made Sayukanai destroy Konoha and then move on to the next village if he had gotten away. Tsunade spoke up. Everyone was shocked by this. So what kept him from getting out? What did Konkuru ask? Naruto. Hiyashi said that he knew the answer to this. What was Naruto doing? He asked Tenten. Naruto and Kayubi both knew about Sayukanai, so they started to prepare in case he was able to get control, which is what you all saw when you witnessed what happened two weeks ago. Tsunade talked. So what happened? Shino inquired. Based on what Naruto said, Sayukanai was able to create a chakra barrier before losing all control of his body. Sayukanai couldn't bring it down once it was up unless he killed Naruto. He finally told Sayukanai that was the only way he could get out, so Sayukanai went back into Naruto's mind to do it. Tsunade spoke up. When Yamato asked, so. As they fought, Naruto said that they were on equal terms until he hit Sayukanai. This made him angry, and he said he would use more chakra from now on. When he did this, Naruto had no chance at all. Tsunade spoke up. But how with Kayubi he shouldn't have had a problem? Sai inquired. But that's just it Naruto was fighting with his own power not Kayubi's. He said Jiraiya. He meant to fight him himself, but Kayubi told him he'd have to help when he was defeated. Not until Sayukanai began to talk about what he planned to do when he was free did Naruto agree with Kayubi. Tsunade spoke up. So that chakra kitsune we saw was Kayubi. It said Shikamaru. Hi, what he was doing was merging with Naruto. Tsunade spoke up. It was very quiet for a long time before they all said, Nani. Going back to the hospital Naruto heard this and looked out the window with a smile. Guess she told them, AQ? Naruto asked as he looked down at the fox on his lap. Probably. The Kayubi mumbled. Naruto looked out the window and pet the fox at the same time. So you mean the Oni Kayubi is gone? He asked Homura. He's not an Oni. A soft voice of a woman spoke. When everyone looked where the voice had come from, they saw Hanada and the female fox kit. Um, who just said that? The Kurinai asked. I did. Hokage. Sama Goman, I can't stand by and hear you talk badly about Q, Umi said again, shocking everyone. I understand Umi. Tsunade spoke up. What is going on here Tsunade? I asked Kaharu. With a sigh, Tsunade said, this is Umi, Kayubi's partner. She can tell me what's going on. Umi nodded back at Tsunade and said, as the Hokage said, I'm your Kayubi mate, and I always will be. We are soulmates. I'm sorry Q attacked, but he thought Konoha had killed his kit and me before he went hunting. In reality, it was a group of Otto. Nin who was told by Orochimaru to dress up as Konoha. Nin. What Umi said. For what purpose? Sai inquired. To make it happen, Umi said. You mean he planned this from the beginning? Asuma inquired. Umi said yes, how do you know all this? Toyo asked. 
When my kids and I were killed, we were brought before Inari, and he told me what had happened. Even then, it would have been too late for me to calm Q down because he was already in Konoha. That's why he made me an offer. What Umi said. What kind of proposal? Ino inquired. I could wait, my kids would go on to be with our ancestors and I could stay with Inari and wait to see what Q would do. What Umi said. What do you mean what Q would do? The Kuranai asked. If he could calm down and help Naruto. Kun, or if he was just going to keep taking advantage of him. I saw how the boy was treated over the years. Inari and I were both shocked by your villager, to be honest. However, the boy never fought back against anything they did. He's still a very nice person. Naruto. Kun's life got better as the years went by and he became a ninja. His senseis, teammate, and other people began to see him as Uzumaki Naruto instead of Kayubi no Yuko. Still, Kayu's power would help Naruto when he was in trouble, and I was always grateful for that. But then Q got bored and wanted to leave. He put Naruto in danger by leaving him there. When we saw this, Inari was, to say the least, angry. He was even more angry with Q when he made Naruto enter what you called, Yanbi Mudo, and kill Orochimaru, which caused Haruno to become poisoned by his chakra. What Umi said. Sasuke looked at Sakura and was shocked by what he saw. As soon as Sakura heard this, she rubbed the arm where Naruto had grabbed her that day with his paw. Why didn't you tell me? Sasuke asked, angry about this. It was when we went after you and I got better, so there's nothing to worry about Sasuke. Kun. It said Sakura. There was actually. Now Umi spoke. Why? Kakashi asked right away, scared to hear this. When that happened, Inari and I thought the girl would be seriously hurt from the chakra poisoning, but all it did was make her tired. We didn't understand why she wasn't hurt even more. So far, our best guess is that Naruto was only partly in charge and couldn't really hurt her. We thought everything would be fine when the Uchiha finally came back and the two went to talk to Q. Q finally seemed to understand that he would not be able to get out of jail after hearing what Akatsuki was doing to his fellow Oni. I believe that news hit him just as hard as our death. What Umi said. But how are you back? It said Hiyashi. Us. Umi said with a smile. You. S? She asked Guy. Umi said, Hi, Q, and I. The people inside thought about the new information for a long time in silence. Hold on, hold on. Are you saying that Kayubi is in Konoha? I didn't believe what he said, so Shikamaru asked. Hi, Umi said with a smile. And why haven't we seen him? Did Choji ask? Oh you have. Hinata spoke up now. What do you mean we have Hinata? Sama? Inji was shocked. The other kit that was with us before. Umi talked. Are you telling me that I've been housing not only Kayubi's reincarnated mate, but Kayubi himself? Now Hiyashi was shocked and asked. Haya Tucson. What Hinata said. The man put his hand on his head and said, I can't believe this. Well really we were just as surprised and didn't know how everyone would react to this. He said Jiraiya. So you knew too? Toyo asked. Hi, who do you think Hanada brought them to once she finished cleaning Naruto's house that day? Asked Tsunade. So why haven't we killed him yet? He asked Homura. Kill him? Didn't you hear what I just said? Umi yelled and growled at the male elder. That wasn't his fault. Hanada tried to calm Umi down by petting her on the head, but it didn't work. Everyone was shocked when Umi jumped out of Hanada's jacket and the fox kit began to get bigger and have more tails. You will have to go though me before you hurt Q. It was Umi growling. Back in the hospital, Kayubi looked up because he could feel his partner getting mad. Hey kid, ready to split? The Kayubi asked. As he put on the last of his clothes, Naruto smiled and said, you know it. Okay, let's go. Umi is upset about something, and when she's mad, she acts like Hanada. He said Kayubi. Naruto looked out at the news with wide eyes and nodded. They began to jump from roof to roof on their way to the Hokage Tower after he opened the window. After a few minutes, Shizune came in to check on Naruto and was shocked to see that no one was there and the window was wide open. Where did Gota now? Shizune asked, not being shocked that he was gone. When she looked out the window, she saw a small fox following Naruto as he went up the tower. Oh well, 
I don't need to go tell Tsunade. Sama that he's left if he's already going that way. He'll be back soon after his trip. Shizun said this, then shut the window and left the room. As the three. Tailed fox slowly crept toward Homura, everyone in the room was on edge, not knowing what she would do. When she got closer, he began to move away. Just as she got close to him, the window to Tsunade's office flew open, letting two yellow blurs in. The one in front of Homura and the one on top of the fox's head. Come on Umi please calm down. The one on the fox head talked. The group saw that the figure was a small fox kit that was yellow and red. He stood in front of Homura with his kanai out, ready to defend him if Umi attacked, which he was sure she wouldn't. Q? Umi asked as her size began to decrease. She was finally back to her small size, and Kayubi nuzzled her and said, it's okay. You don't need to be upset because I'm here now. Kayubi spoke up. He smiled back at the man and said, I don't know what you said to make her so mad, but next time don't say anything about Kayubi in front of her. Will you? Otoudo how did you know? Tsunade was shocked and asked. Q felt something wrong with her and her being like Hanada I figured that would be the only thing that could set her off. Nani? Naruto asked with a smile. Everyone in the group was shocked by his insight. Naruto walked over to the two kits, picked them up, and looked at Hanada with a smile before giving Umi to her. She smiled back and said, yes. Oh, yeah. I think they told you to say, in the hospital. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Tsunade said he was upset. He laughed and rubbed the back of his head. I told you, Oba. Chan, I don't like hospitals, he said. Tsunade shook her head and said, okay, since you can get here without any trouble, I guess you're fine. Um, may I ask you something? He asked, how did she just grow? And everyone looked at him. Umi was shocked and asked, I did? Everyone said, yes. He asked her, you didn't notice? She shook her head and said, I wonder if I could too. Naruto told him, not now, Q. It's too crowded in here. Angry, Kayubi said, party pooper. Okay so if that's Kayubi, why is he an Ichibi kit? Sasuke inquired. Because I gave the kit almost all of my chakra and power, Kayubi said with a smile. Nani? The older people asked. Only way to beat Sayukanai so that's what I did. He was in trouble and I wasn't going to lose someone else to something that Habi did. Kayubi told me. So that chakra kitsune we all saw was you. Lee told us. Right, I had to come out like that to merge with Kit, so he could beat Sayukanai. It turned out it worked and everything's fine now. Kayubi stated. Worked out. Worked out. You freaking, bombarded me with all you power without any warning and then in the end you go and leave me alone. Making me think you were gone and on top of all of that you give me all you memories and make me see Atuzan's battle with you and his last moments with me. How did things work out? Naruto said angrily to the fox his rage around him. People were shocked by how the boy was acting around them. Kayubi asked, do you really think you wouldn't be better off without me Kit? Naruto nodded, I didn't matter, even if we told them you were gone there still be those that don't believe us and still treat me like dirt. When Kayubi saw what was going on with Naruto, he told Kit, calm down. Calm down? How can you tell me to calm down when I almost lost the one thing that's been with me my entire life? Naruto asked him. He started to show all the fox. Like traits he had during the jutsu again, but this time he had nine tails. Kayubi yelled, Kit. Kit, you need to calm down. He wasn't listening anymore, though. She finally put Umi down and gave Naruto a hug. He was shocked, but as soon as she touched him, he felt better. As Naruto calmed down, the feature went away, and he went back to being normal. Konkuru asked, Okay, could someone explain that? As I told Tsunade, I'm here to help him control his new powers. Kayubi stated. So that's why Inari sent you here? Kaharu asked. I believe so, though Umi said it was other things. Kayubi stated. Umi stuck her nose in the air and said, If you still don't believe me, I can't help that. The Kayubi walked up to her and licked her face. She smiled at him. Okay, so now that you all know what's going on I need to ask you something. Mostly this is something for the elders and I, but I don't see why you can't stay. Tsunade stated. The elders gave a nod, but they didn't think everyone had to leave either. Tamari asked, so what's going on? 
Well the Konoha Matsuri is coming up in a couple of days as everyone from here knows. At the end of the Matsuri the Hokage always gives a speech. I've decided to tell them. According to Tsunade. Hori asked, do you think it's too soon? Tsunade nodded, E, he's back to looking like himself now and I believe it's time Konoha knew the truth and find out who they've actually been hurting all these years. Tsunade stated. We understand Hokage. Sama and will go inform the others of your decision. Some might not be happy about this. Kaharu told us. Like I care. We've put off telling them about his family for too long. He's old enough to fend for himself, especially now with all that's happened. They should know, Tsunade stated. The two old men bowed to her and then left the room. Naruto asked, so you're going to tell them about me then? Tsunade replied, what about those three who took Hanada? Hanada tensed up as he spoke, but she was still hugging Naruto. All of the group saw this and heard Tsunade say, they are still being held and will be allowed to go to the festival with Junin to hear what I have to say. Naruto agreed with what she said and said, K. I'm going home then. Naruto, Hanada, Umi, and Kayubi were killed by fire at that moment. Ino asked, Um. What was that? A kitsune way to get around, Jiraiya said. Hayashi asked, So you've seen it before? He told him, Yeah, Kayubi did that to us once. Hayashi said, Ah. After that, the group left the two Sanin. Do we also need to tell them about the Kisnis? Jiraiya asked. She sat back in her chair and said, E, I think if we tell them about Otoudo, they won't think anything of the two Kitsunes them. Uriah asked, but what if they do? I'll just say that Hanada found them in the forest and kept them because they are too young and without an Okasan to take care of them. Tsunade stated. Jiraiya looked at her cover story and said, Okay, I'll see you in two days. Uriya then left Tsunade to do her work. Tsunade whispered, Sukabe. The four people showed up in Naruto's kitchen as he went to the fridge to get food with Kayubi on his shoulder. Honestly Naruto. Kun is that the only thing you think of? Hanada inquired. Well, Hanada. Chan, try not being hungry for two weeks while you're asleep, Naruto said with his head in the fridge. Hanada and Umi laughed out loud at what he said. When he finally found what he was looking for, he closed the fridge and put a lot of things away. He began to make something to eat with the four of them. Naruto fixed his food and smiled at Hanada, Hey, are you sure you don't mind going to the Matsuri with me? I mean, I'll understand if you don't want to go. Thought Hanada, Ii, I'd love to go with you Naruto. Kun. Do you have something to wear though? Naruto turned his head to the side and asked, to wear? Inu asked, Hi, do you have a Hakama? Naruto shook his head and said, never needed one. For one, they're too expensive for me, and for another, I've never gotten more than 10 feet into the Matsuri ground before being caught and kicked out. The other three looked at him with sadness and said, but it's okay, I mean it just means I can train more and all. He smiled at her and set the plate with the sandwich on it in front of her. He smiled back at her, and they went to the dining room to eat. Umi and Kayubi were given small plates of beef from the floor to eat after they sat down. Okay, so first we need to either see if Yuatusan left you a Hakama or we're going to have to go buy you one. Hanada stated, that is of course unless a Tucson has one for you. Naruto sighed, I don't want to bother him with anything else Hanada. Chan he's been too kind to me already. As they began to eat, Hanada smiled at this. He was standing in front of the Hyuga elders at the Hyuga compound. He said, Onagai, think again about what you're going to do. E, Hiyashi we have decided and it's final you will announce this at the end of the Konoha Matsuri. A senior said. Hiyashi sighed and left the room, leaving Neji behind. He couldn't change their minds. Hiyashi told Neji, don't tell anyone about this. Neji said with a nod, hi, Hiyashi Oji. San. The boy smiled at Hiyashi and called him uncle. The two of them then went to the dojo. Naruto and Hanada were now looking through Naruto's room while Umi and Kayubi sat on the bed and watched. She told Naruto, I don't think there's one in here. Naruto frowned at her news and asked, do you know where else they might have put the Matsuri outfits? He shook his head and said, E, I mean, this room and yours are the only ones I've really been in. Are you sure you haven't looked in the other ones yet? Hanada asked in shock. E, I've looked in them, but I just didn't explore further than seeing what was inside of them. Naruto stated. I asked Hanada, why? I don't know Hanada. 
Shan I just don't feel it's right for me to pry into their things. Naruto made clear. After making a face, Hanada grabbed him by the wrist and said, well, we're going to check them out now. So, tell me which one you think would most likely have them in it. She then led him down the hall. The last one on the left looked like a room for Okasan, she said. Naruto was shocked at how brave she was. Hanada agreed and went to the door. When she opened it, she saw that he was right, it was his mother's room. A sewing machine and a couple of clothing dolls were there. In front of the house, there was a big window with a view. Some dried flowers were lying on the widow seal. There were a couple of kimono on the wall, and Hanada gasped at how beautiful they were. She was amazed by everything in the room as she walked around it. As she looked at the kimonos, she saw that some were uchikaki, which are worn to weddings, and others were matsuri. Hanada said with joy, oh, there had to be a hakama in here, Naruto. Kun. Okay, Naruto said as he stood by the door. There was one kimono in particular that caught Hanada's eye, and she was amazed by what was on it. The kimono was a dark navy blue color, and the sleeves had blue flames on them. At the bottom, there was a picture of the ocean with waves rising. On the front, there was a fox near a shrine. On the back, there was a bigger fox flying through the air and passing the moon in the middle of the kimono. Umi said, that's interesting. I've never seen one like this. As she and Kayubi walked into the room. Hanada asked, never seen one like this? That kimono tells an old kitsune story, Umi said with a nod. Hinti asked, what's the story? It goes that one day a vixen, on orders from Inari, came down to a shrine to help the locals. As she arrived a handsome and kind man was praying at the shrine to find true love. The vixen hearing this felt pity for the man and decided to help him find love. She followed him in the shadows seeing what kind of person he was. Soon she saw that all the women of the villager though little of the man because he was not wealthy, but she had begun to fall in love with him herself. The next time he visited the shrine to pray she appeared to him in human form. The man fell in love with her instantly and she told him whom she was. Even though she was a kitsune messenger he didn't care for he could see the kind person she was. The vixen later went back to Inari to ask for his blessing. Inari gave it to her saying he knew that they would be happy together and they were. The couple ended up building a house near the shrine and started to take care of it and have done so ever since. Umi said finishing the story. Hanada smiled and said, oh, that's a great story. Umi said yes. The two were being watched by Naruto and Kayubi. Naruto saw that Hanada was looking at the kimono. He went up to it and took it off the nail. He grabbed it from the rod hanger and gave it to Hanada. The Naruto said, here. Hanada said, I couldn't Naruto. Kun. It was you, Okasan. Hi, and it's mine to give to whomever I want and I can see you like it. I don't have any use for it and it's being wasted just hanging up there. Naruto stated. She grabbed the kimono tightly and said, Okay, Naruto. Kun. But we still need to find you a Hakama. In the room, there was one bigger closet that she went to and opened it up. She opened the shelves to see what was on them. Well looks like you Okasan must have been a very good seamstress Naruto. Kun because all of these kimonos are handmade. Hanada stated. As she looked, Naruto hummed along with what she said. She opened the third drawer down and saw the obis. The one that went with the kimono Naruto had just given her caught her eye, so she took it out and looked at it. The obi was light blue and had a scroll and a spiral ball on the front. That part of the back that hung down was made of thin threads that made it look like the flames on the kimono. Naruto gave her a nod as she looked back at him. She kept looking until she found all the hakamas and other items in the very last drawer. She took out a number of them, not sure which one Naruto would like. But as soon as she got to the bottom of one, she knew he'd wear it. She smiled as she brought him all of the hakamas. Naruto. Kun here they are, just look through them and pick the one you like. Hanada told him. Naruto said yes, and as she went back to the closet, he began to look through all the hakamas she had brought him. He started to feel bad about what he was doing as he went through them. Naruto said as he left the room, Hanada. Chan, you know what? You find me one. When she saw him leave, she looked back and sighed. You know how hard this is for him. Going through his parents' things and never knowing who they were, Kayubi told her. She told him, I know, I just wish he'd tell me. Kayubi told Naruto, he doesn't have to tell you. 
You know him better than anyone else in this village. He then left to find Naruto. He's right you know. It's like Hugh and I we don't need to talk much to know how the other's feeling. That's how you two are. Umi stated. The girl said, hi. So which one are you going to choose? Umi asked with a smile. She already knew which one she was going to choose because she had seen it. Now Umi why are you asking me that? You know which one. Hinata said that. Hi. I just thought you might finally tone him down a little. Umi stated. Of all the things Naruto. Kun is, he's not toned down, Hanada laughed. She got Naruto the Hakama she knew he would love and went to his room, where she knew he would be. He was, in fact, sitting near the window and looking out at his backyard. This one, I think you'll like, Hanada told Naruto as she put the Hakama on his back. As he looked out the window, Naruto said, Arigato. When Hanada took the Hakama out of the box and spread it out, she said, You know I feel the same way when I go into my Okasan's old room too. Naruto asked her, Excuse me? As he looked over at her. You're not comfortable in their private areas, Naruto. Kun. Even you can't hide that from me. Help from Hanada. He smiled at her and said, I guess you know me too well, eh? Hanada smiled and nodded, Now come over here and see what I picked out. I really think you'll love it and I'll even show you how to put it on. Naruto then got up and went over to where Hanada was standing. The hakama on his bed was just his style, and it looked good with the kimono he had just given Hanada. The top was white and had flames on the tips of the sleeves. Also, there was an uzumaki spiral on the back and shoulders. Each of these was red and had blue thread used for the details. The pants were yellow at first, then turned orange and red at the top. Naruto gave the kimono a smile. I do believe this was your Atuzan's though there could have been someone else with a fixation on flames. Hinata said with a smile. E, it's his I've seen picture of him in this. Naruto said that. Naruto was then shown by Hinata how to fix the Hakama and tie everything together. He waved from his door and said, thanks, Hinata. Chan. She waved back and said, I'll see you in two days. I'll pick you up in front of the compound. This made Hanada nod, and she smiled as she walked home. Naruto went back into his house with the same smile on his face. Umi asked Kayubi, so when do you think he'll ask her? As they watched the two of them from a window upstairs. Kayubi yawned and said, hopefully when they're at the Matsuri. They went back to the bed, curled up next to each other, and fell asleep right away. Naruto was flying through his house trying to get everything he needed for the Konoha Matsuri. Kit you have everything. Kayubi said this after seeing the boy speed past him and Umi several times. E, I'm still missing something. He said Naruto. What? Kayubi was angry and asked. I know I put them here somewhere. Despite Kayubi's question, Naruto said. Umi do you know what he's looking for? The Kayubi asked. I think and if it's what I think he's looking for it's in the kitchen. What Umi said. Kit, try in the kitchen. Kayubi yelled. While going to the kitchen, Naruto sped past them. He laughed with joy when he found it. He walked out with a bunch of lavenders in his hand. That's what you were looking for? Kayubi was angry and asked. Ah, it's so romantic Q. What Umi said. What about your Hakama? The Kayubi asked. This is why I'm going over there early. I am going to put it on at Hanada's house. He said Naruto. Is that all right? Umi wanted to know. Yeah, I asked Hiyashi if I could the other day. He said and then paused. Kit? The Kayubi asked. Nothing, Naruto said, probably me thinking too much into things. After that, the three of them left. Naruto. Kun what is on your mind? Umi asked as they were going. It might have been the way Hiyashi behaved the other day. I believe something is wrong. He said Naruto. They both looked at the other fox. Soon enough, they got to the Hyuga compound. When Naruto walked in, Hiyashi and Neji were there to greet him. Naruto right on time. Neji will show you to a room where you can change, Naruto said with a smile. Hiyashi smiled back. He will stay with you in case you need help. Arigato. Because he and the foxes were following Neji into the house, Naruto said, Neji. Hi, Naruto. Neji said as she walked to the room. Is everything alright here? What did Naruto ask? 
Naruto saw that Neji was getting a little stiff and asked, what makes you think something is wrong? I don't know call it Kitsune instinct maybe. Naruto said as he rubbed the back of his head. When they got to the room, Neji shut the door and let the groups in. Neji? What did Naruto ask? No, Naruto, I can't say anything. Everything will be clear tonight. Please have fun tonight with Hinata. Sama. Neji was happy. Naruto got mad that he wouldn't tell him what was wrong and said, Okay, Neji. But I don't know how much fun she'll have with me. Let me see how the villagers feel about me. Oh don't worry we have that covered. Neji told him with a smile. That made Naruto raise an eyebrow, but he agreed. Now let's get you in your hakama. I told Neji. After saying that, Naruto took out the hakama and put it on. He didn't have much trouble with it and only needed Neji's help once. You did very good with this being your first time wearing a hakama Naruto. I told Neji. Yeah, well it does help that Hanada. Chan showed me how to put this on before. Naruto said with a smile. She what? Inji was shocked. He looked red in the face from what he had just said and especially because he had just told that person, um, yeah, she showed me how to put on the hakama when we found it. Neji smiled at Hanada's recent behavior and said, well, let's go. She and Hanabi. Sama should be done soon. The two boys and the foxes then left the room and went to the front door to wait for Hanabi and Hanada. Naruto showed up while Hiyashi was already there, and he was shocked again. That was Naruto. I swear you're going to give a lot of people death tonight. Hiyashi said, you don't know how much you look like Arashi, do you? This made Naruto tilt his head to the side. Naruto shook his head and said, well, let's just say that you'd look younger on him if you didn't have the whisker marks. Arigato Hiyashi. Naruto said with a smile, thank you very much. Finally, someone hit a piece of fabric against a piece of wood, and everyone turned to see two people walk in. Hayashi was shocked by how Hanada looked, but Hanabi was only mad about what she was wearing. How come nay? San gets the elaborate kimono? Hanabi asked with anger. I'd like to know where you got that kimono to Hanada. Hiyashi was shocked. Oh that'd be me. Naruto said, I think it was one of Okasan's old kimonos. Hanada liked it, so I gave it to her. This made everyone look at him. You're right. Oh, Naruto, that was Okasan's old kimono for you. The only time she wore it was to the Konoha Matsuri. Hiyashi talked about. Well then it's a good thing I gave it to her then. Naruto said with a smile as he gave her the lavenders. You look good in your Atuzan's hakama, Naruto. Kun. Hanada, she said, smiling at the lavenders. He smiled and scratched the back of his head. She turned around and put the flowers in a vase close by. Can we get going? Hanabi asked quickly. Hi. Hiyashi said, taking his younger daughter's words seriously. The group then left the house, with Kayubi on Naruto's shoulder and Umi on Hanada's. Hanada could tell Naruto was getting tense as they got closer to the festival. Naruto. Kun it's alright. What Hanada said. Naruto said, yes, but he kept looking around. He thought, it looks like someone is going to attack me. On the other hand, if he's had to deal with this his whole life, they might have done that to him if they caught him going to a festival. That's when Hanada heard the whispers. Someone asked, can you believe it? E, how can that girl stand being near that bakemono? Someone else said. She was shocked to see that the voices were from two women who were always nice to her when she looked at where they were coming from. They waved and smiled at her, but she just glared at them. The two looked at her in shock as she turned around and looked forward again. Someone asked, do you think she heard us? E, I believe she saw us move. I've heard from the Hyuga elders that she's not that good of a ninja after all. What the other woman said. They said things that made Hanada mad, so she told them, don't worry about it, Hanada. They always talk like that. He talked to her. She said, but they. Hanada. Hey, I've heard that before. But they'll all feel bad about how they treated me for years after tonight. Naruto said, and Hanada agreed. The group finally meets up with their other friends. I'll see you all later on tonight then. Hiyashi says, I left them. Yes, Naruto. Oh, hi. Neji. This way. She yells, Sakura. The three of them moved to where their friends were waiting and waved at her. The girls are amazed by Hanada's kimono as they get closer. 
Ooh, Hanada where did you get that? Ino inquired. Oh, um, now Hanada starts to feel bad. It used to be Okasan's and I gave it to her. He told her when he saw her blush. Oh it's beautiful Naruto. Kun, your Okasan was very gifted in making them. It said Sakura. Naruto agreed. He saw that Gara and Konkuru were wearing their normal clothes, but Tamari was dressed in a beautiful kimono like the other girls. Hi Tamari, I had no idea you brought that with you. Naruto said with a smile. I didn't Shika's Okasan let me borrow one of hers. Tamari said with a smile. Mendoku's. It said Shikamaru. Then what about your brothers? He asked Naruto. Oh. She said that the only Hakamas in the house were Shika's and his Atuzans. Tamari spoke up. You should have told us Gara. What Hanada said. Gara looked at her and asked, why? This is because Naruto. Kun has a lot. One of his could have been yours to borrow. What Hanada said. I wouldn't want to inconvenience anyone. Gara answered. Being inconvenient? That's what friends do, they help each other out, Gara said. How's Shukaku doing? Naruto asked with a smile. Okay, he hasn't said much since the event. I think we finally understand each other. Like you two have. Gara said as he looked at the bag on his shoulder. When Kayubi saw the boy, he glared back at him and saw his eyes change to Shukaku's. Gara agreed with Kayubi's nod. He then moved close to Naruto's ear and spoke in a low voice. He looked shocked for a second, then smiled. Naruto? Questions from Gara. Nothing, he's just glad Shukaku decided to be good now and let you sleep. He said Naruto. How did you know? Everyone asked in shock. Um, Oni conversations aren't hard to figure out. Naruto said with a shrug. As the people in the group kept talking, their senseis, along with Tsunade and Jiraiya, came over and joined them. When they saw what Hanada was wearing, some of them looked shocked. Jiraiya. Tsunade spoke up. I see it, but I can't believe she's wearing it and look at him. She pointed to the person next to her and said. While adults watched from behind, they thought it was Arashi who had come back to life. Gaki? Jiraiya asked a question. He turned around and smiled at them like a normal fox. Oba. Chan, Arrow. Senen, I thought you wouldn't be here until later, he said. Ma, we can't miss out on seeing all these lovely konichis in kimonos every once in a while, eh? Kakashi asked with a smile. Kakashi stopped being a Sukabe. Kuranai was angry. As he looked at her, Kakashi smiled at what she said. So Hanada where did you get such a lovely kimono? Guy smiled and asked. Hanada turned red when he asked, Anyo saw. I gave it to her. Naruto said with a smile to the adults. That that was you Okasan's wasn't it? The Kuranai asked. Yes, Naruto said, but it's just hanging there, and Hanada. Chan looks better in it. Do you agree? Hanada turned redder when he said those words. All of the women looked at them and saw how much they cared about each other. As Naruto and his friends walked along, not many people paid attention to them, but some people, mostly ninjas, were shocked by the boy's outfit. Given that many could remember the last time they saw it worn. People in the village were furious that he was defiling the Yandaimi even more by wearing something that looked like his. The teens moved to the area where couples were dancing together as the Matsuri went on. Sakura and Sasuke were dancing at the time, as were Neji and Tenten. Everyone else was sitting around a big table and talking. As Choji finally got up the nerve to ask Ino to dance and Tamari almost dragged Shikamaru out of the room, Hanada was the only woman left at the table. She sat there quietly and enjoyed the music, the people talking, and the atmosphere, but she really wanted to be dancing with Naruto out on the floor. He stood up and walked over to her as if he could read her mind. When she looked up at him with doubt, he put out his hand for her to take. When she smiled at him, he smiled back and grabbed her hand. He helped her get up from her seat and led her to the dance floor. Can he dance? Kiba questioned. The other guys left with a shrug because they didn't know the answer. If not we'll have a good laugh. Konkuru said that Gara's sand hit him in the head. He yelled at his brother, who looked at him mad at what he said. You're worse than Nay. Chan. A mumbled Konkuru. Gara laughed at what he said. Some friends were dancing a slow dance when Naruto and Hanada got there. 
The two of them joined in. They looked at each other and smiled. Naruto. Kun. What Hanada said. Hum. Naruto made a hum. When did you? She asked Hanada. He gave her a smile and asked, learn how to dance. He laughed and said, everyone must think I'm a bumbling fool, don't they? Hanada nodded. She shook her head and said, E, that's not what I. I know Hanada. Chan. Naruto smiled at her and said, I learned that a long time ago. While I was still in Konoha. Really? Hanada was shocked. Yeah, one of Oba. Chan's orders. Naruto said with a laugh. As the band played, Tsunade stood and sneezed next to the stage. Someone must be talking about you. Jiraiya said with a smile as he looked out at the dance floor. Tsunade looked after him and saw Naruto and Hanada. I wonder who? Jiraiya laughed at what Tsunade said and said, told you that was a good choice. You had that all planned didn't you? I too asked Jiraiya. He laughed as Tsunade looked at him with a straight face. Before, Hanada was dancing with Naruto. She put her head on his chest and smiled while moving slowly to the music. I think I could stay like this forever. What Hanada said. We could. Naruto's chest echoed with his words. She looked at him with surprise, but all he did was smile and say, I mean if you want. She was shocked and asked, Uzumaki Naruto, what are you asking me? When Hanada asked. Naruto smiled at her and asked, what do you want? Naruto. Kun stop joking around and be serious for once. Hanada said with a frown. He turned around to look at her face. He turned his head around to get a better look at her. Please don't be so vague when you ask me again. In general, you're not like that. What Hanada said. Naruto laughed and asked, so the straightforward approach it is? Hanada laughed and nodded, then Hanada. Chan, would you like to be my girlfriend? Hanada laughed and nodded again then jumped up and gave him a hug around the neck. She put her ear to his so that only he could hear. I'd like nothing more than just that Naruto. Kun. It was said. She stepped back, and Naruto looked at her with surprise. Really? You don't know how long I've waited for you to ask me that. What Hanada said. He scratched the back of his head with one hand and said, You know how long it takes me to get stuff like that, Hanada. Chan. That I do. Hanada said with a smile. Hey. That was A. Naruto spoke back to her, but he was cut off. Right then, Hanada's lips touched Naruto's, ending his sentence. In the table where the guys were left, Naruto could hear a whistle. He thought it came from either Kiba or Konkuru. Jiraiya was busy taking notes in his notebook while Tsunade was smiling big at the stand. The bad news is that Tsunade saw this and hit him in the head, knocking him out as she grabbed the notebook from him and threw it on top of one of the nearby torches. Couples on the dance floor who knew each other stopped dancing right away to look at how brave the two of them were. I threw a punch at them. Last but not least, Hanada let Naruto go. He was shocked at the time. Dom. It was heard that Konkuru said. Told you. You have a beautiful woman, Kit. Someone yelled over the group. When Naruto turned his attention back to the table, Kayubi was smiling big at him. Baka fur. Ball. Now where did that come from? Naruto asked Hanada with a smile. Too many years of waiting for you. Hanada said with a smile, acting innocent. Well this allow me to ask your forgiveness for denying you that for so long. Naruto bowed to her, and Hanada laughed again at what he said. You're forgive, but I'd like to have another one later. What Hanada said. Your wish is my command. Naruto told her, and she laughed again. The music stopped, and people began to gather around the stage to hear the Hokage speak. The Hokage would always speak before the end of the Matsuri. It was a tradition. Though, as she began to walk up, Hiyashi pulled her aside. He whispered something to her, and she looked at him like she didn't understand. She nodded, though, and went up on stage. When she got to the top, everyone quieted down to hear her. All of Naruto's groups of friends had gathered near him and Hanada when they saw that some people were staring at him. Gara came up behind him and stood there in case he needed to help his friend. Thanks to everyone who came out on such a nice night. This year's Matsuri had a great turnout, but before you all go home, and while I have the whole village here, I need to tell you about some things that have happened in the last month and some new information I've learned. First, I'd like to say that Konoha. 
Nin Orochimaru has died, but it was our own Uchiha Sasuke who did it. Tsunade spoke up. The crowd cheered when they heard that the band Sanin was finally dead. Which means we have no Sanin now, so for starters I'd like to announce that to replace Orochimaru I'm giving his former apprentice and reinstated Konoha. Nin Uchiha Sasuke the title of Habi Sanin. Tsunade spoke up. Everybody looked at Sasuke was shocked, and he could see that he was shocked too. Way to go Aniki. Naruto said as he slapped him on the back. Jiraiya and I have also decided to step down as Sanin because we're getting too old to keep the title. This is because a new Habi Sanin is taking over. Even more so now that our apprentices are much stronger than we are. It's now Haruno Sakura's turn to be Namakushi Sanin. Tsunade spoke up. Jiraiya, who had finally woken up, stood next to Tsunade and said, Uzumaki Naruto, I give you my title of Gama Sanin. There were shouts from the crowd at that point. That's not possible, right? Giving him the title of Sanin. Someone yelled. This will put the whole village in danger if he's that powerful. Someone else yelled. People in the village and Naruto were both watched by Tsunade and Jiraiya. Whose head was now hanging at them for not believing this. Hanada was mad that they thought that of him and looked at him. Oto Uto. Sasuke whispered that he saw the villager and how he reacted. You're a sigh. Tsunade yelled at them in a mad way. The crowd went completely silent right away, now on to my next announcement, is to end Serutobi's law. Finally we can kill that Bakemono. One man looked at Naruto and said. Then a kanai felt its way toward Naruto's head, but a wall of sand stopped it. The man who threw the kanai was then pulled to the stage by a big pile of sand. No one should do anything until I'm done. When that boy's story comes out, you will all feel bad about what you did to him. Tsunade spoke up. We doubt that. A number yelled. Tsunade said, we know who his parents were. Like we care. Someone else yelled. Uriya had lost all of his patience by that time, so he yelled back, well you good for nothing group should. He was sealed inside by the same man who did his O Tucson. This news made everyone in the village gasp. You're lying to us. People spoke out against this. In other words, we have Serutobi's journal and the fact that Jiraiya and the elders were present at Naruto's birth. United States Naruto is the last member of the Kazama clan and the Yandiami's Masuko. You've been bad to a boy all his life who was the Masuko of our village's greatest heroes. Tsunade spoke up. It still doesn't matter he's still a Bakemono. Still another villager said. Not if he's gone. Jiraiya said with a smile. Gone. What can Kayubi do to be gone? A number of people yelled at different times. Easy Naruto absorbed his power and Kayubi's gone. Tsunade talked. How did that happen? Asked someone else in the village. Like you'd care? It made Tsunade mad that they were interested now. They might not, but we do. This time, a ninja talked. Okay, then. But I think I should first talk about why Kayubi attacked us. Tsunade spoke up. What does that matter? Someone asked. Hi, it does because he was tricked by the very missing. Nin's death I just announced. Tsunade glared at the person and said. The crowd let out another gasp. Tsunade then told the story of how Kayubi found his mate and killed the people who were killing kids while Konoha was Hitayate on. What took place and why Kayubi was locked up? But you said he was gone? Someone spoke up. Hey, Uzumaki Naruto was taken by Orochimaru after the battle with Akatsuki. The same ninjas who went to fight Akatsuki also went to find Naruto and found him, but it was too late. Orochimaru had broken the seal, which made the two basically become one. Tsunade spoke up. I don't understand. One more voice spoke. He used an old form of Kenjutsu from Konoha that was made when we first started our country. It was so bad that the person who made it erased his memory so he could never use it on anyone, but we wrote it down anyway. For some reason, the people Orochimaru sent to get his jutsu wrote it down wrong and mixed it up with another jutsu. When he used it on Naruto, it had a strange side effect because of his tenant, which has finally been fixed in the last couple of weeks. Tsunade spoke up. A person asked, but Kayubi? Alright, okay. Because of what happened with the jutsu, Kayubi joined with Naruto and is no longer there. Then giving Naruto all of his power, including Chakra, Tsunade spoke up. 
The group was quiet for a long time as they thought about this. Nani? A lot of people yelled. So, let's say this. Kayubi is no longer there, and Naruto now has full control over all of his power. He hasn't changed into a Kayubi because of this. He's just a very strong teen now. Most of his friends are too. Jiraiya said with a smile. There were a lot of nods of agreement, and some boys looked at them with confused looks on their faces. But most of them got what they were told and felt bad about how they had treated the boy before they heard it. He has been living with Arashi for a long time because he is a Kazama. Tonight's clothes are even more proof that his Atusan was Arashi. Tsunade spoke up. This is completely true. They walked up to Tsunade and Kaharu and said, we didn't say anything because Naruto's life would be in too much danger if someone from the village did and one of Arashi's enemies came after him. Someone asked, then why tell us now? Because the truth needed to be told if he was to ever be treated right and also the boy is strong enough now to fend for himself if needed. It said Kaharu. Everyone in the village nodded. The group soon left, leaving Tsunade on stage by herself once more. One last thing before we all head home for the night Hyuga Hiyashi has an announcement to make. Tsunade spoke as she moved to make room for Hiyashi to enter the stage. Ishii bowed to Tsunade as he came on stage and moved to the front of the stage. To my fellow villagers, I'm sorry I caused trouble at your Matsuri, but the elders asked me to make a statement. It said Hiyashi. It wasn't clear to Hanada what her dad was doing. But Naruto turned to look at Neji, who gave him a nod. Naruto replied with a nod, paying close attention to what was being said. The have been asked to announce that the Hyuga family will be having a fight in two months to decide the rightful heir to the household between my two Masumi Hyuga Hanada and Hyuga Hanabi. It said Hiyashi. Hinata let out a gasp. As Hiyashi began to walk off the stage, people in the crowd began to murmur. Before he could fully leave, though, a voice could be heard through the crowd. Nani? As much as I can tell, they are going to take Hinata's rightful title away from her. Naruto yelled. Heya smiled as she stepped off the stage and said, Hi, she's in good hands, and everything will be okay. The story is over now. I'm currently writing the follow. Up which I think will be called strength of an heir for now. It might not come out for a while. I might not have as much time to work on it as often as I did on this story because I'm starting a new job soon. Also, I don't like putting out a story until it's almost done. Wait a little while longer, and it will be out soon. So that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel for more awesome stories like this. Thank you. See you all in my next video.